Victor Borger. He was a comedian, a brilliant comedian, and a virtuoso pianist who was very special because he was the first one to really combine um, classical music and comedy in a way that nobody had ever done before. And he, he was massive in the 60s and 70s. If you, if you were of a certain generation, you would have literally grown up laughing at Victor Borger on TV. And as a result, he had a massive career. He toured everywhere, radio shows, TV shows, and the longest running one-man show in the history of Broadway. It's still in the Guinness Book of Records. I really stumbled across him, actually. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm a pianist. I love classical music. The Chopin Prelude, number 20. Here we go. for me to write a show about classical music which I did uh, for an Edinburgh festival a few years ago but every single review I got for that show mentioned Victor Borger. I actually was probably not that interested in Victor Borger initially I was more interested in his publicist who was a person so brilliant they could consistently get their client into my reviews but of course I was intrigued and I started to find out about him and then the BBC sent me off to make a programme about him, and that's where I discovered his story, a fascinating, unique story which most people don't know anything about. Victor Borger was born in Denmark, so he was Danish, but he was also Jewish. So when the Nazis invaded Denmark in April 1940, he had to get out. He happened to be married to an American woman, which gave him access to America, but he landed there hardly speaking a word of English. And what struck a chord with me was, that's exactly what happened to my dad, Wolfgang Hirsch. He came from Germany in April 1939 and landed in the UK, not speaking a word of English. He didn't tell anybody he was coming apart from his father. And it's that and the other parallels that made me want to write the show. Now, I go to Germany quite a lot. Rainer Hirsch is a German name. I'm half German, half Finnish, which means I'd like to take over the world, but I'm too polite. <laughs> yeah, and as far as I know, I am the only German comedian uh, ever. The show, it lasts for either an hour and 10 minutes in one act or an hour and 45 minutes in two acts. I play Borger of course, and I also play his life story at the piano. In order for you all to understand this, I have to go way back and speak about my great grandfather, whom we trace back to Marie Antoinette. As a matter of fact, my great grandmother traced him back there a couple of times also. <laughs> there's all those great routines, the material, reimagined of course for the 21st century, but over it all is the art, the story that I mentioned, and I think that's why people are glued to their seats between the funny bits. It's a story of iron will, if you ask me, of determination and success in the face of huge odds. It's a story which says if you've got talent and determination, anything is possible. And it's the combination of those various strands that I think is the reason why this show is so successful and why it's still sort of in my repertoire. Since 1992, folks, I have been a stand-up comedian. That's what I do for a job. Um, I've had some easy jobs. I spent six months as a store detective in a piano shop. Those are the days. <laughs> You should have seen the size of the raincoats people came in with. Um, I've got lots of favourite moments in the show. Maybe one of the most unusual is where I play out myself meeting him, which I did backstage in a concert hall in Stockholm, of all places, right at the end of his life. Um, for the audience, I think that provides the closing of the circle and it sends them away having had a great laugh and having seen an act of storytelling 
if you will, that reminds them of the great talent that he was and the love they had for him. And if there's anything I'm trying to transmit with this show, it is the love of the man and hopefully in some small way to pass him on to another generation. Thank you.